Founded in 1922, the Isaac Walton League of America is dedicated to common sense conservation. Hi, I'm Brad Redlin, the Director of Agricultural Programs for the Isaac Walton League of America. We're talking to you today from the Bush Lake chapter of the Isaac Walton League in Bloomington, Minnesota. The 2012 Farm Bill can protect our soil and our water by a simple act of putting conservation compliance expectations on taxpayer dollars. There are three ways which taxpayer dollars are delivered to producers in agriculture through the Farm Bill. The first of these is crop subsidies. The second one, crop insurance. Third, conservation programs themselves. So, crop subsidies. These are the traditional form of payments that producers receive for producing commodity crops, program crops. They're basically set on three basic ways of providing those. One is a floor payment. For those producers of select program crops, corn, cotton, wheat, rice, soybeans, the floor price says if the price of that commodity should drop below those prices, the government will ensure that you at least get paid that floor price. The second way is a target price. And the target price simply says if the price for your commodity crop doesn't reach this level of payment, the government will make up the difference there. And the third form of payment is this automatic payment that's paid to a producer every year, regardless of price, regardless even of the crop that he grows. It's just paid based on the fact they're registered crop producers. Now, in this case, all three of these payments are essentially irrelevant. The price that the floor is set at and the target price itself as well is far below what prevailing market prices are for those commodity crops. The third payment, those automatic payments, those are slated for elimination by all parties. So in the terms of the traditional crop subsidy system what we see today in the 2012 Farm Bill, all those payments have gone away. Where is the money gone? Well, the money has gone to the crop insurance program. The federal government pays 60% of the crop insurance premium for producers to buy their insurance. And what kind of insurance is it? Well, typically it's been a yield-based insurance or an insurance that protects a producer against crop failure. With hail, rain, floods, storms, we understand that a farmer can't control those threats to his production. And that's what crop insurance has traditionally been. The crop insurance has evolved too. It's now primarily a crop insurance system that pays based on what are called revenue policies. And what this does is pays a producer a guaranteed harvest revenue at the end of their crop year. Now this can both protect them in the case of weather failures and if they have a crop loss, but it also protects them in case of price changes in the marketplace. In the case of a price drop, they'll be insured against with a higher price. These revenue policies have an unintended consequence. They can reward a producer for draining wetlands or converting marginal land because they're guaranteed both a price and a yield come harvest. So if a land is at risk for not producing a good crop, it doesn't create an obstruction for that producer to go ahead and pursue production on it anyway. This is a problem that can also be corrected. The conservation programs, the traditional vehicles that were there to provide defense of our natural resources from agricultural unwise practices are themselves threatened. The conservation funding mechanism that rewards producers for participating in the programs is being cut and being cut on an annual level. We know in the 2012 Farm Bill that we'll see reduced investment in conservation. We will have less opportunity to provide those voluntary incentives to producers to enact conservation in their own operations. So when we put this all together, we know one thing. We need conservation compliance in the 2012 Farm Bill. Conservation compliance simply says is that where taxpayer dollars are being invested, taxpayers have the right to expect some basic protections for their soil and water. For decades, compliance has been attached to payments producers already receive, whether it be the crop subsidies we talked about or the conservation payments. However, now we've seen that the crop subsidy payments aren't being made, the conservation programs themselves are being cut, and crop insurance is where all the money is. Unfortunately, in 1996, crop insurance was exempted from conservation compliance. That is the one form of payment, the largest form of payment to producers in the Farm Bill that does not require any compliance to receive those subsidies. This is how we affect conservation in this 2012 Farm Bill. We establish compliance back on those crop insurance payments because it's those types of payments through crop insurance that rewards revenue and guaranteed yield that encourages the destruction of our soil and wetlands that we would never have intended to do with our public dollars. So in the 2012 Farm Bill, we return the conservation compliance that requires soil protections and wetland protections to crop insurance subsidies. And further, we enact something called a sod saver provision, which just simply says that for ground that has never been in production before, it will be ineligible to crop for crop insurance. This ground can be planted to any crop a producer may want, but it won't be rewarded public dollars for doing so.
Become an effective voice for Farm Bill Conservation. Visit the Isaac Walton League's online advocacy center at iwla.org advocacy.